Okay, here's the deal. From the moment I'm up, it's incredible. Yeah, feeling magical. <laughs> magical. It's about that time. I say what? Baby, rise and shine. Oh. I'm all about that, about that. Yeah, I can feel it. It's about to be a good day. Yeah, I'ma kick it like I never had a bad day. Keep my chin up. Stand tall. Yeah, mama always said like, right. stand tall. What's up, everybody? I'm Crazy Aunt Lindsay, and you are in the Fab Lab. My Fab Lab professors today are Cambria and Simone, and today we're opening a pet shop. Crazy Aunt Lindsay, what does pets have to do with science? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Millions of homes across the globe are the happy habitats to wild and domestic animals. Some are labor and farm animals, while others are emotional support and family pets. Learning about them and taking care of them can be super scientific. Ever hear of zoology? Zo what? Zoology. More on that later. In this episode, we're going to meet the number one pet in all the world. Can you guess who it is? <laughs> then we'll make Fab Lab pet treats three ways and use them to learn the scientific method to design an experiment to help us decide which pet treat we're going to launch in the Fab Lab pet shop. And of course, the Fab Lab library. We'll stop there to pick up one of my favorite new books. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. This story is about family, honesty, and braving the unknown, following a young autistic boy who uses his mathematical genius to investigate the death of his neighbor's dog. Stick with me for the Fab Lab Pet Shop, because science is fabulous. I'm chasing, I attract, I attract the energy I give, I get it back. Science says that we learn best, not just when we're having fun, but when we're relaxed. We're gonna take the Fab Lab heartbeat together to get our hearts and minds ready to learn about science. You ready? The first thing we're going to do is our box breath. Put your hand over your heart, take a deep breath in, and blow it out with a sound. <sighs> Inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, two, three, Four, exhale, three, four. I am ready to learn about zoology. Let's do it. Zoology is the study of all animals, from creepy critters to bodacious beasts. Animals are everywhere, out in the wild, up in the sky, on farms, and in our homes. But with more households hosting at least one dog more than any other animal, the Canis lupus familiaris is the most popular pet in the world. As the domesticated descendant of the Canis lupus, the gray wolf, dogs are related to foxes and jackals. Today, there are more than 400 breeds of dogs, but paleontologists mostly all agree with archaeologists saying that about 60 million years ago roamed the Mayakis the extinct ancestor of dogs, coyotes, wolves, and even weasels. Extinct means a species or group of beings with no more known living members. Fast forward tens of millions of years and meet the focus of today's episode, dogs. We're gonna pop into the Fab Lab living room to meet one special pup in particular who's gonna help us with today's project. This is Miss Bodie. She's my dog. Miss Bodie came into my life just a few months ago when one of our houseless neighbors, Chris, was trying to get into a housing and recovery program. But unfortunately, they didn't have room for Miss Bodie. When he told me about his conundrum, I offered to make a home for her, either temporarily or permanently. That way, he could still see her, not risk losing her forever if he got stable and well, and know that the love of his life is well taken care of in the meantime. I'm so glad that Chris entrusted me with Miss Bodie because she and I have been so happy these last few months together, and I'm still learning how to take care of her. Today's Fab Blabulous projects are all inspired by some of the things that I learned while trying to get her diet and skin just right. We're going to use some of Miss Bodie's most successful recipes to design an experiment and learn the scientific method in the process. The scientific method is the process of establishing facts by testing and observing the results of an experiment that you create about something you think might 
or is happening. The flow of the scientific method is this. Step one, ask a question and do some research. Step two, develop a hypothesis or an educated guess based on the research that you did about your question. Step three is to design an experiment or gather evidence. Step four is to analyze that evidence. And step five, which is my favorite, come to a conclusion and communicate your science. Me and the girls were wondering, which of these treats is Miss Bodie going to like best? Research says that the first dogs are carnivorous, but that domesticated ones are omnivorous. Carnivorous means they eat meat. Herbivores eat vegetables. Omnivores eat everything. My hypothesis or educated guess is that she'll like the meat ones best. We made three types of treats and now we're going to test them. Now we're gonna make our Fab Lab treats three ways. We're going to do a vegan version, a vegetarian version, and a carnivorous version. We know that our domesticated pet, our dog, or Miss Bodie, is an omnivore. But dogs love all kinds of things, fruits, vegetables, and meat. So we're going to make some options for all the families and all the dogs that might have taste buds. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on my vegetarian version. All three of our fabulous treats start with a foundation of good old all-purpose flour. We'll add one cup of it each to our three separate bowls. To our vegetarian batch, we're cracking two eggs and sprinkling in a good bit of cheese. <laughs> Dogs love cheese. I'm gonna add a splash of bone broth to just make it a little bit more doughy. Next, we're gonna do the vegan version. Our vegan treat needs a half a cup of peanut butter and some nice. sweet potato. And be squishing it and pressing it and squishing and pressing. We're hand mashing because it's easier and helps get the love inside. On our carnivorous version, we're going to add everything. Two more eggs and the rest of our sweet potato make the perfect foundation for the rest of our carnivorous add-ins. Nice. And now one or both of you sprinkle some chicken in there for me. They still need to add the cheese. Oh, thank you for remembering. As you can see, we're just winging it. <sighs> Grab some flour and you're gonna help me to flour our workspace. Feels like baby powder. And now, let's roll out our dough. We're gonna freehand cut dog bones and hearts. But if you have cookie cutters, letters of your names, or any shape that you like, your dog is gonna like it just the same. I did it. I'm impressed with it. Awesome. <gasps> yes. Cute. I'm gonna need way more oohs and ahs because this is fire. Look at this dog bone. Cute. I made the Eiffel Tower. You made the Eiffel Tower? Oh, je suis le fri. I don't know what I just said. We're gonna put these on the Fab Lab baking pan and thanks to a little help from YouTube Magic, we have beautiful Fab Lab bones. We're so excited to find out which bone Miss Bodie's going to choose so we know which one to feature in our Fab Lab pet shop. A is carnivorous, B is vegan, and C is vegetarian. Hi, Miss Bodie. So she chose A. Hi, Miss Bodie. Look, Miss Bodie. Miss Bodie, look. Oh! <laughs> Go look, Miss Bodie. Go look. Oh, hi. Hi, Miss Bodie. <gasps> I think the jury's in. Miss Bodie likes all the bones. So we're going to feature all of her bones in our Fab Lab pet shop. As you can see, Miss Bodie loves all her dog bones. Help us get clear results for this experiment by trying it out yourself and see which treat your dog prefers. Make today's recipes, run this experiment on your own, and contribute your results to the Fab Lab Community Science Experiment Survey at thefablab.com slash community science.
What better way to burn off all these treats than with a walk? Good thing, because Miss Bodhi needs to go outside at least four times a day, which has actually been like a medicine for my depression. Come join us on our active hour. Miss Bodhi loves to eat and sleep, but she also has a lot of energy. Her ancestors and carnivorous cousins are very active animals, roaming mountains and running across fields for hunting. For this week's active hour, we're going to go on a nice long walk. Let's put our jackets on. We live in the Pacific Northwest where it rains a lot. Want to make sure that we're nice and protected. I love to combine my personal business with our daily walks running errands to places like the grocery, the library, or to visit a friend. We're often stopping at dog parks and exploring other neighborhoods, turning our wander into a nature walk, identifying plants, trees, and even rocks. Where will you go on your next walk and what will you find? Come with me to OMSI to learn more about herbivores, creepy critters, and so much more. I bet this all looks like twigs and branches to you but this is actually a cage full of bugs. To be exact, Vietnamese stick bugs. My friend Jen, OMSI educator, she's going to introduce us to all of these and so much more. <gasps> it's laying an egg. Hey everybody, I am here with some very creepy critter friends and a very lovely friend, Jen, uh, here with OMSI Life Lab. What the heck is going on here? All right, we are looking at two different kinds of stick insects. Oh my gosh. I know, so these walking sticks look a lot like sticks or like leaves or like plant material. And you know what? They're actually herbivores, so they eat plants. So yes, we learned with Miss Bodhi that a, an omnivore eats plants and animals, and an herbivore only eats plants. Only eats plants. So we are here with herbivores today, our Vietnamese walking stick, our Australian walking stick. But the interesting thing is, is they are hunted and eaten by predators that do eat animals. Mm. So, can you think of why they might look like this? Oh my gosh, I have a feeling that because these look yummy to something, <laughs> that they might have turned themselves into um, camouflage leaves and sticks to prevent themselves from getting eaten. That's exactly what's happening, exactly. So the Vietnamese walking stick, it They lives... did a great job. Oh, they both did an amazing job. They are native to Vietnam and tropical rainforests, and so they are green and they blend in really well to those tropical rainforests. The Australian walking stick lives on eucalyptus trees down in Australia, and they look very much like a eucalyptus they tree. They look like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> are they heavy? No, they are very light. Would you like to try to hold one or touch one? Yes. Right. Let's do it up here. No. Oh, my God. Get on the tree! Get on the tree! tree. You're, You're good! Down. You're good! Oh, look at him with his little straight up. He's like, that lady crazy. I'm feeling very curious and very courageous right now. Okay, okay. here. You got it, you got it. Get there. Okay, this one is very exciting. We are here with Turtle the Tortoise. Turtle the Tortoise, you got it. Tortoises and turtles have so many stories in the whole wide world. Um, this is a reptile. Oh yes, and a Russian tortoise. A Russian tortoise, a reptile. Now, we've got a couple of options for food here. When we hung out with Miss Bodhi, we did a little experiment to see which one of her treats she would like the best mm -hmm. based on the ingredients. Here we have four different ingredients. Talk to me about the dietary needs of a tortoise. Yeah, so a Russian tortoise in the wild is going to feed mostly on grasses and plant life. So they are herbivores. They're only gonna eat plants. Uh, in captivity though, turtle, the tortoise, uh, sees a lot of different types of foods. 90% of the time though, it's gonna be leafy greens. So things like red leaf lettuce that we got right here. We've got some collard greens. My favorite. Over here, we got some orange treats. We have both carrots and sweet potatoes. Right here, we've got grapes. Okay. And, and grapes are our turtle's favorite. I am so curious which one our amazing little tortoise is going to go toward. Which one do you think? 
I see, I know her, and I know that she loves the grapes. So that is my my prediction. But like I said, 90% leafy greens, and she hasn't eaten today, so I know she's Ooh. hungry. Let's All right, see. are we ready to go? Three, two, one. <laughs> What do you think, turtle? She seemed a little bit interest peaked when I brought them closer. Is that interessant? What do you think? Madame Tatel? Is she gonna grab it with her hands? No, she'll go straight for it with her mouth. <gasps> like oh. that, like so. This is definitely a hungry moment this for her. This is a real, <laughs> a real treat. Thank you so much, Jen. Well, of course, thank you so much for coming and visiting the OMSI Life Lab. Thank, thank you for having us. Of course. Us. Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, a mystery novel by Mark Haddon, is this week's Kid Book Club pick. This book tells the story of Christopher John Francis Boone, an animal-loving, autistic, mathematical genius boy who solves the mystery of who murdered his neighbor's dog while discovering some unexpected truths about himself and the world around him along the way. This book may look intimidating, but this award-winning murder mystery was originally written as children's literature and even has two editions, one for kids and one for adults. You can find out more about this book and many others on the FabLab Library Shelf at thefablab.com slash library. Join us on Patreon for the full schedule of FabLabulous live story times. We'll read this book and many others. My favorite step in the scientific method is to communicate our science. We'll do just that by sharing the results with our customers by featuring Miss Bodie's favorites in our pet shop. Now we're really ready to open the Fab Lab Pet Shop. Hi! The Fab Lab Pet Shop is a success, and I want to say thank you to everyone that helped make this episode possible. First, to the scientific method for being such an awesome process to learn more about the world and ourselves. Thank you to Miss Bodie for being so sweet and to Chris, her former caretaker, for entrusting her to me. To Simone and Cambria for being such fabulous professors. And of course, thank you for joining me because science is fabulous and so are you. Thanks for watching. Good job, guys. High five. Nice. First sale. Thank you to OMSI, the Marie Landrum Foundation, and the entire Fab Lab community of patrons on Patreon and iFundWomen for making this entire season of STEM programming possible. 